Hey, what's up? I'm Fabian and I'm here to coach you into big tech. Today we're going to talk about system design basics, especially scalability. One of the major concepts you need to understand to get through your system design interviews at any of the big tech companies like Google. So let's get going. Before we get into scalability, we need to be clear on how we actually deploy code into production. Most of the times you write your code locally on your machine, you test it, and once you're ready to ship, you bundle it up and upload it to a server where it's then gonna live. While 10 years ago, it was still quite common to have a server sitting in your basement. These days, most of the code is not living on that servers locally anymore. It's more often the case that you would upload it to a hosting provider which has massive data centers and you simply send over your code, they host it for you and you're simply paying for the usage of the hardware. Once you deployed your application to the server, client applications are going to start requesting data from your server and your server is going to respond with the data with a small delay, what we call latency. And for now, let's assume we have a single server with a single CPU, which is able to handle 100 requests per second with a latency of 10 milliseconds. And this goes all well as long as we have less than 100 requests per second. What can happen, however, is if we have more and more clients requesting data from our server. Let's assume it's 101 requests per second for now. That means our single CPU cannot handle the workload that well anymore and it starts concurrently process those requests. As a result, we do have the latency go up. Let's say up from 10 to 20 milliseconds. And so far, we're just talking 101 requests per second. So just one more than we actually can handle well. Now think about it. What happens if we're going to have 200 requests or even 500 requests per second? The more requests are coming in, the higher the latency going to get. And at one point in time, your server going to crash because it runs out of memory. And at that point in time, latest, you gonna know you should have cared more about scalability. To be fair, you can also optimize single servers with a single CPU to fail more gracefully than that. But this video is about scalability, so let's ignore this for now. So there's actually two ways you can scale your system. The first you probably already thought about because if the CPU is our bottleneck, why not just get a more powerful server and all gonna be good? Yeah, that, that's vertical scaling and that can be done. But there's also horizontal scaling. And next we're gonna look into the two options and see what's the benefits and the drawbacks of each of them. Vertical scaling. It's a good idea to have a single very powerful machine. For example, you do have fast inter-process communication. There is no problem with that at all. And it's also very good because you can keep data consistent in a very easy manner. There's no problem with that at all. However, it's still just a single machine. So if you think about it, your requests already got your smaller server to crash. Now if the requests increase again and even overtake your more powerful server, it's simply going to fail and you have the same problem as you had before. If you want to avoid this problem and get an even bigger machine, you can do so. But there's actually an economical limit because at one point you're going to have the most high-end single server you can find on the market. And what do you do 
if your user numbers even continue to grow after you have bought that one? Well, instead of buying the most high-end server you can find, you start to simply buy multiple servers and you run the same application in parallel of in all of them. The benefit is really reliable because if one of those servers goes down, no problem, the load is just directed to all the other servers. And it is scalable in a sense that you don't pay more per request when you scale because you're not going into the high-end server market where you have to buy the most expensive machine just to get another thousand requests handled, handled per second. No, you just keep buying mid-range servers and more and more of them. So it's linearly scalable. However, if you go with horizontal scaling, your system becomes way more complex. How do you balance the load between all your servers? You also have to come up with a way the servers can communicate with each other. And this needs to go over the network. And consequently, data consistency becomes a massive problem. How do you tell all your servers what's the current state of your application? That's a tough one, but we're not going to talk about this today. There is an upcoming video where I'm going to talk about this in detail. That was the basics on scalability. But how does that exactly help you in your system design interview? And well, first of all, you're going to get the problem, the system you're supposed to design. And what you need to make crystal clear is the amount of users you expect to use your system. If they ask you to design the parking lot, which is one of the classic design, system design problems, it's probably not going to be more than a thousand. When you're being asked to design a system that is the Uber app, let's say it's the Uber app, it's definitely more than a thousand users you need to accommodate. And this is really the first thing you should make very clear. While you design your system and you talk the interviewer through, there's a couple of other questions you should answer yourself. Otherwise, they're going to ask. For example, how do you monitor the health of your system? It's very nice if you can simply explain it as a side note. That's always very good. If no questions are coming up, you would rather address them even before the interviewer asks. And it's also interesting to um, talk about bottlenecks. Every system going to have a certain part where you could say it's a bottleneck in that sense. So the least scalable part of your system, let's put it that way. And you should point this out yourself. And if you are good with it being there for the time being, say that and recognize that this might be a bottleneck and explain and justify why you keep it like that for now and how you would change it in the future if certain things, conditions change, more users are being onboarded, something like that. Last but not least, if you can add a little bit of detail to your architecture. Naming certain types of service or technologies is a good idea. It shows that your knowledge is not just theoretical, but if you name a certain technology, you should be able to justify this choice. If you can, go ahead. This just adds relevance to your explanation. That's it on scalability, at least for today. If you found this video helpful, just subscribe because there's more videos like that coming up in the future. If you have any ideas and suggestions for me to improve, please leave them in the comment section below. See you next time!